Hi everyone, it is Natalie from Being Intentionally Creative. We're going to be experimenting again and I hope you enjoy the experiments. I do because it helps me to learn and it also helps me when I do experiments because I am getting people commenting on different things they've been trying and the results they've been having. And then I think, okay, so you've been having success or you've done this and you really like it. Let's do it on the channel so other people can see what's going on in the world and potentially try it, not try it, do what they feel is the best thing for them. As Tim Holtz says, you do you. You will see, I have my phone stand back again. We've done the previous tests and I apologize for the noise because I need to clean this out. We had done a test, we had done an experiment where we used the mixed mold. I have still yet to finish that um, piece. I've, it's been sitting, well, ever since we did that video. And I, I, I need to sand it down a little bit and I want to decorate it up so it's not just a, a plain a pink, and, pink and blue phone stand. Anyway, there were a couple of people who had commented that they use polyurethane to make these and they find that they're very strong withstanding the weight of a phone and in my mind I'm thinking well it's a resin how hard can it be or how tough can it be to not you know bend with the weight of the phone like typical two-part epoxy does I happen to have some polyurethane and it's by Illumilite I am still hoping that people will share what type of polyurethane they are using. I've mentioned before that I would like to get some of the Let's Resin polyurethane. I know there's other brands out there, uh, and I, you know, aside from what I see in other videos that I may watch, I don't know, you know, all the different brands that are out there and or who has the best brand, and it may be I need to just do some testing and whatnot. We're going to do, actually do two tests in this video. The first one is I am going to do a polyurethane uh, phone stand because I am very curious about that. Someone had also commented that you can drop polyurethane on the ground and it won't break. I always, with my clients, say if it drops on the ground, whatever I'm making, it may break. I'm not ever going to say something won't break because I don't know the circumstances you know of things falling on the ground. The other experiment we're going to do is we are going to use two-part epoxy but with a twist. Someone had mentioned to me about um, uh, I have milled fiberglass fibers and it was mentioned to me about putting that in the two-part epoxy resin and that being a strengthener for the resin itself. I have gotten some I want to try it out. I want to see if that does make a difference in the epoxy resin to make it more firm. I don't know how much to put in so when we do that test it's going to be sort of a random how much I put in because it wasn't mentioned how much it was just this works to help uh, give the resin more durability and more strength and I think that's really cool and I think they also mentioned in the video that it doesn't show up like if you're mixing it with a color and I would kind of like to do that because if I'm going to make it I'd like it to have some design and not just be uh, clear so we're going to do that the other idea I had and I don't know how good of an idea it is and I'm not going to do that in this video but I was in Dollarama the other day and picked up these cute little butterflies and I also picked up some flowers I like flowers. Anyway, these are, I've got purple and pink. What I had thought of and why I picked these up was I thought, well, sort of going along the theme of what Steve McDonald had done with the wire, I had considered putting some of these in with the two-part epoxy, again, to see if it would make any difference to keeping these from bending. May or may not, I don't know but it was something I was contemplating doing. Again, not going to be in this video. That might be in a later video when I'm really needing to get a video done. Something like this one. Anyway, <laughs> you can laugh at that. It does get a little challenging after a while doing three videos a week, constantly trying to come up with new ideas. 
and I do like it when my subscribers point out, oh, well, I use this and this works really well. And if I, again, if I have the product and it's not a big deal for me to get it, I do like to do these experiments because it helps me out to know as well so I can comment. What I'm going to do is, from the skull I had done, I still have some leftover mica powders that I haven't used. So I'm just going to take these mica powders and I'm going to put them in the this mold because of the fact that I don't want to waste it. It's really good mica powder. It's by Eye Candy. And I don't want my phone stand just to be white. I'm going to go and fill this in however I feel necessary. I'm also going to measure out. It took 160 uh, mils, grams of mixed mold in these. It won't, I don't think, take as much of the uh, polyurethane and or the epoxy resin when I do this. So I'm kind of going to figure that out and we'll go from there and if I have to mix up a little bit more of the alumilite then I'll do that. But the good thing is that I can do this, we can let it sit 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, take it out and then I can move right on to the epoxy resin and have a, you know, well, we'll see what happens. Anyways, I'll be back in a bit once I have my mica powders put in and I've got my aluminite not mixed, almost mixed, and then we'll see what happens. I have got 50 grams, 50 mils of part A, part B of the aluminite. We're going to mix, obviously, 100 mils. I also am going to add in some of this Recollections Chunky Polyester Glitter. It is called Cherry Blossom, just because I can and I want to. <laughs> so I just, I want to move these off to the side, the one container. I slop some down the side of it. Okay. So I am curious. I Another question I had asked when dealing with the polyurethane, uh, the Let's Resin, for example, I wanted to know, so the Illumilite Part B is yellow, and I have found that with some of my pieces, that because that's yellow, that my pieces tend to yellow, which I don't like. So if anyone's used the Let's Resin or another brand, and your Part B is white and doesn't sort of go yellowish over time, can you please let me know what brand you're using? because that would be very helpful to me when I'm deciding next time to buy some. I know that a yellow Part B will make pieces go yellow faster. I've experienced that and I want to find a Part B that isn't, isn't yellow. I mean this stuff works great for me doing tests and I don't mind, but I won't, I won't sell pieces that I have a concern that they're going to yellow because of the Part B. And therefore, if anyone has a recommendation where they haven't had that experience with a specific brand, if you could comment below, that would be awesome. So I just want to get my my glitter out so I can, you know what? Um, bum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. I just want to be all prepared to put that in. I don't know if this is going to be enough or not, but we are going to see. And then I'm going to want to really quickly clean out my container here because it is plastic. It's not, I was going to say styrofoam, silicone. It's not a silicone. So I don't want this stuff hardening because then I'll just have to get rid of it. I am curious to know if any of you have been impacted by Ernesto, the current tropical slash hurricane that is is building up. Uh, we, again, video being made ahead of time, we are expecting some rain uh, as a result. I know Atlantic Canada is on the path and I, I feel for Atlantic Canada, oh, you have no idea. Last winter was brutal for those living in Atlantic Canada because of the storms. And they are also getting hit this year because of the rains and whatnot that we've been getting. Anyway, I hope wherever you are, if you are impacted, that you are safe. 
I know that uh, I've, I've seen pictures, and I, I never know whether the pictures are current or, you know, previous from, you know, months or years ago. I don't know. But, I mean, there is quite a bit going on with storms, so I hope you're all safe. We are expecting some rain all weekend, and whether we get that rain, I don't know, but we definitely, where I am, yeah, we can we can get a lot of rain, but I'm not sure just how much we should be expecting. Uh, let's get some of this in here. It was a re really, it re it's a really pretty glitter. Okay, let's get this going and it's warming up. So I want to get this poured soon. So we'll just do that. Start with the big one. And hopefully this is, uh, and I think a hundred is going to be just about right for this too. Yeah. Okay, so maybe a hundred and sixty will be just right for this as well. Because the hundred's fitting in there nicely. Okay. So I gotta get this cleaned out. Like I said it's in a plastic container and I don't wanna have to deal with well, I don't like throwing things out if I can avoid it and Yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to mix up another uh, 60. You can see how quickly that's setting. <laughs> I'm going to mix up another 60 mils of this, pour it in the other section. And then once that is done and set, we will take it out. Boy, that's uh, important thing to know. The more of the polyurethane you mix up, in one batch, the quicker it decides it wants to set. So keep that in mind if you're working with it. I know I had done a piece a long time ago where I made a whole, like I made a lot of it and it just, I'll show you the piece that came out as a result of it. It's funny and I love the piece and I still have it obviously because I can show it to you, but it was, yeah, it was so interesting. It's like, ooh, so this stuff sets really, really fast, does it? <laughs> and it does if you mix a lot of it up. Anyway, I do have air bubbles in this as well, which we can try and, and get rid of, but I don't know how much. Anyway, I'm going to let it go. The, the true test on this really is all about how strong is this and can it, can it hold a phone and not bend. Anyway, once I've got, once it's all poured, once it's all set, we'll come back, we'll take it apart. And then we'll move on to the epoxy resin. This has been sitting for approximately about half an hour now. While it was setting, I live in the country, so I went upstairs and I did some dusting, which was desperately needed. I don't like to dust, just to let everybody know, but it needed to be done. And it feels good when you get it done. It's just the process of doing it because I have a lot of little things I got to go around and lift up and dust off. Anyways, you know, you don't really care about my dusting escapade, but I did get something constructive done while I was waiting. Well, let's take these out. This took probably about 50 mils. So I did another one of my skull pins, if you want to call it that, we'll take that out. So I'd say approximately 50 mils. And the one thing with this mold is that it doesn't sit entirely flat. Uh, so for part of the time that it was starting to cure, I held it down. Now, I think because of this getting warm like it does it you know has I would say maybe a negative impact on the mold itself but it wasn't sitting flat before I poured in the polyurethane okay, <laughs> okay. well there's grunge written all over that now isn't there the other piece isn't probably going to look any better but there we have it. I'm going to want to, now this has a bit of a bend in it, so I am for sure going to put this somewhere and hopefully be able to kind of bend it back down into shape. Um, maybe I might have to heat it up. I do want it 
flat. I don't want any sort of warps and bends in it. Because I, when, we, when we sort of test this out, I want it to be sort of a legitimate test. So let's get this out in there. So this, this has junk journal phone stand written all over it. Um, I have some junk journal stuff. I might just put it on and just to decorate that up a little bit and make it look um, a little less junky. And isn't it interesting how when you go and do something like this and yeah, the coloring just comes out totally different on both of them, but that's okay. So I'm going to work on uh, heating that up a little bit and getting it flat. And I've got my desk over here, which I can put it on to flatten that out because I do want it flat. So let's just see if I have to do anything to this. I might have to shave those down a little bit. Yeah. It, it was nice with the mixed mold because it fit in perfectly and this is not. I'm going to have to shave shave these down uh, because they're too they're, yeah they're too thick for the piece. They're not going to not going to fit in. Yeah, I'm going to have to I have to do some sanding on those to get this to fit in, but that's okay. Uh, so can we we know we've got a little bit of play in there right now. Again, I will get this this flattened out. Uh, using my heat tool because I, I do want it flat and I'll work on sanding these down so we can put it together. So I'm just going to put those off to the side right now. And then this little piece in here, let's take it out just for show and tell reasons, not no other reason. Yeah, oh, he's missing, <laughs> missing part of his finger. But still, it is a skeleton after all. They do lose, lose parts. I do love this piece, it's very cool. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I am going to carry on and try and flatten out my mat again. They're, they're getting warped in the process of everything. So I'm going to clean up. I am going to I don't know if I'm going to put anything, any mica powder in the bottom of this, or maybe what I'll do is just mix the mica powder. I still have some of the other stuff left. Just mix it up. But first, before I throw any colorant in, I am going to get my resin mixed. We'll put in some of the fiberglass uh, milled product that I have here to mix it in, and then I'll add my colorants. We'll pour and have to leave it for 24 hours. It may not be a fair test after 24 hours to uh, put a phone on it, but that's exactly what I'm going to end up doing because I do want to see after 24 hours, even though I know it takes more than that amount of time for resin to set up fully cure. I, I do want to see if it makes a difference at all in, in my pieces. Anyway, so I'm going to go get all that figured out. I'll come back when I'm ready to mix in the fiberglass. The two part epoxy resin is mixed up. I decided to get out a measuring spoon just because as I mentioned, I don't know how much to put in here. So we'll start with a half a teaspoon or relatively that amount. Uh, let me just see if I can, I did not open the bag enough. Let's dump this in. Hopefully this will mix, you know, sort of relatively well. As I said, I've never done this before and I'm just giving it a go because someone had commented that this was a way to have the resin withhold the weight of a phone. So I figured, well, I'll give it a go. I, I know I can't, you know, buy all products and what have you to do testing, but I thought this was an interesting, I mean, I think of people who are making these phone stands who may not realize that, you know, it's not very thick, which means that, you know, the resin, you know, just can't with, withstand, you know, the weight of the phone. I mean, phones, some phones are fairly heavy. 
And I think if you're going to go to all the work to make a really nice resin piece and then to find out it's not going to hold as I did when I made first made mine, I mean, that's it's disappointing. And then what do you do with it? I'm not, I'm not sure what, you know, other uses you have for it. And I am trying to remember if mine even just bent without having any weight on them. So it's, you know what, if we can find a way or different products we can use to, you know, make the phone stands so they, you know, withhold the weight of your phone. And actually, maybe that's a good test because now that I've got my mixed to mold one done and it has been sitting for what a week now we would you know we'll just put my phone on it and do a bit of a test so we'll we'll see how this goes now I did warm up my resin a little bit it's I've had the air conditioning going so it was I, I have some air bubbles and I'm not um, gonna be too surprised because I'm getting air bubbles, I think because of this product as well. So I think what I'm going to do, just because I can, I'm going to just put another half a teaspoon in here. We'll just do a teaspoon. We'll see what difference that makes in the in things. And uh, yeah, I and I might do some research too between now and the time I I'm able to take this piece out of the mold and just see if they have recommendations for. You know, you're using this much resin and add this much product. Um, and, you know, because I did not look that up. So maybe that can be one of my research for when we, you know, take this out of the mold. I can say, okay, this is what I found out if I can find anything out. So I might have to write that down and put it on my to-do list for this video. So it is, it is coloring the resin I mean it's sort of a oh that's not going to help you out very much uh, it's, mm, a dirty gray maybe so I guess that's something else you're going to have to think about too if you're going to do this it's going to color your resin so again maybe you know this isn't the best option for doing this especially if you're trying to make it a pretty color or certain colors you may have to take into consideration that it's going to it's going to color the resin I don't know if I lift it up here if how well you can see the color but it's definitely not well it's not clear anymore okay the other thing I'm going to do is because I still have some of the mica powder I am just going to knock my mica powder in so I can have it done so again for me it's more of you know how is this going to work versus is it a pretty color I'm, I'm more interested in finding out how this withstands the weight of a phone as I said I, I was quite disappointed with the stands I'd made and they were they couldn't handle my phone and I guess that was, what, two years, maybe two years ago that I did that. So I think this will be really helpful to people who are, you know, wanting to make phone stands. How can I do it? And I think the nice thing with the mixed to mold or something like a ceramic resin is the decorating you can do with the piece once it's set you know, decoupage, junk journal ideas, painting it, stenciling it. I, you know, I, in some ways I think it, it lends itself a lot more to what creative you can do to it. Okay, so now I have an even more sort of mucky color. Uh, I would, I, yeah, getting this stuff to break down. It's breaking down, don't get me wrong, it is breaking down, but I guess like mica powders, I've got some some white chunks in it. Okay, now I also brought out an alcohol ink by Ranger called Wild Plum. We're gonna put some of that in here. 
And what did I make up? I made up about 150 mils. I was running, my bottles were getting empty, so I may have gone a little overboard with what I I made up that I may not make, may not need. So that's okay. I can always find something else to put the rest in. Now, being that we're talking about this and doing the ceramic resin and now doing a couple of other options, or is there something else you've done that might help any of the other subscribers? I, I do appreciate, you have no idea how much I appreciate you commenting. I like that we're sharing ideas. I like that when you give an idea, if I can, I will I will do because I think it's helpful. Like I said, I learn from that. Have you done this any other way? To make these phone stands so that they are, they support the weight of a phone. Okay, so let's just pour this. I'm probably going to throw some now. The one thing I do want to make sure of is that this is sitting on flat. And not because I get bubbles. I don't know how to get rid of those. I kind of smoothed them out before and that kind of worked, but I just want to make sure these are flat. Okay, and hopefully we do have enough. So I can still see bits of the white in here. Or the powder, call it what you will. And I'm going to try and keep this as even with the top of this as possible. I don't like underpouring, but I don't like overpouring either. I'd like to, this to be as flat as it can be, up to the ledge, if you will. I have to, I saw your comments about you're totally cool with me being quiet when I'm concentrating, which is brilliant. Thank you very much for that. And I noticed some of you commented that you don't like the music. I've been watching some videos. I haven't heard, don't know exactly how to add music to my videos with the program I'm using. So is music something that people are adding when they're, like it's actually you're hearing music? Because as I say, I haven't heard any with what I've what I've been listening to, but that, you know, doesn't mean, that doesn't mean anything, right? Uh, I'm just, I'm curious. Do you actually hear music playing? If you can comment below on that, I'd appreciate it. Because then obviously if, now I've got a big chunk. Obviously if people are like commenting, I don't want to listen to music, then somehow they're adding music to their videos. I hear the word, I see the word music in quotes, or not in quotes, in um, parentheses, but I, I haven't actually heard the music. So comment below for me on that one if you don't mind. So I'm going to have some leftover of this, which I, I'm not surprised by. That doesn't surprise me because this stuff is thicker than the other products I've used so far. Okay, let's just do that. And I definitely have air bubbles. And I definitely have uh, some of the white showing up. Now, if you really, if you, like, we're going to be particular, you could uh, take the time and pick those out. I, uh, I'm not. <laughs> Again, <laughs> this is this is a test piece. Uh, I really wish my butane lighters would last longer than they do. Anyway, if uh, you want to, yeah. And I don't really want to spritz alcohol on this. Tempted to, but I don't think I'm going to. And I know some of these bubbles go away on their own. I get that. I figure if I can help a little bit, I will. So, and then I'll sort of get an idea how much of this resin. I just want to get sort of 
I'm doing my best just without pulling my camera over to get down. Yeah, I think I still have a little bit of room in these for some more. I've got quite the long tether around my neck of cord for my mic, so I'm always very careful that I'm not yanking anything where I shouldn't be. Yeah, another reason I, I want to make this a fair test, I mean, if I don't put enough resin in here, that's not going to be a, a fair test for this, and I just want to make sure, without going over, that I've got enough in here. Okay, and I'll go over the other piece and add some more to it because I think I need some more in here as well. Although I really I hate the idea of having to sand these down, but anyway, again, got to make it fair. I know, my hand's in the way, isn't it? Are you having fun watching my hand? <sighs> there we go. Okay, so we're almost to the top. So I've, I've kind of been going by this piece here because I don't want to go over top of it uh, because then that's extra work for me. So we're not doing too badly with the thickness of this. And I wanted to make sure, that was the other thing, I wanted to make sure that I mixed this all together because I didn't want to have to try and, you know, figure out, okay, this is how much of this fiberglass I put in one, if I did this first and then I did this one. It was like, no, do it all together. If you have leftover resin, you got leftover resin. Again, not a big deal to me. And I'm probably not, I'd, I'll have to put it in one of my other cups if I want to sort of figure out how much I've got left. Well, I have less than 50 mils left of this. Let's see if I put that over there. I'm just trying to, for my own sake of whatever. So, uh, 20, 25 maybe left. So if I did that was about, so maybe, maybe 125 mil to do both with using resin, give or take. So I'll have to make note of that too. I think we're good. <coughs> I don't think I need to add any more, you know? Of course I will, right? But I don't think I need to. All right, let's do it at that. I'll find something else to put the rest into. Maybe surprise you at the end. I, I have. Yeah, I don't know. If, I hate doing that. So I was thinking I could do uh, this piece again. I'm going, but you've never, you haven't had enough for it yet. I really have no idea how much that takes, because every time I filled it up, it's never been enough. It has never been enough. Okay. Well, you really don't need to see me doing this, but apparently I think you do. I will, I'm going to go through and take out some of those chunks because I know it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because this is a test, but I think I want to, I get some, kind of make it look somewhat pretty, right? But I would definitely, I think when, if this works and if you use it, you're just gonna have to take into consideration that the color is going to be adjusted because of the powder. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. It's 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 fairly white, but there is a color to it. It's not it's not like the mix to mold or the J Diction. It's not that white. Um, yeah. All right, people. I'm not gonna hold you up. When this is ready to be taken out of the mold, we will do that and we'll do a quick test then. And then maybe what I'll do is hopefully before the video goes live, I'll be able to do another test to see how it's holding up and also to check, check out the other two. 
As I say before, this is going to take me longer to get to the next step than it is you see in a bit. We are ready to take these out of their mold. I had extra resin left over, as you know. This piece is sort of uh, partially done, so we're going to leave it in there and I'm going to finish it up with I don't know what, but something. It's interesting how I've, I've yet to get that completely, like really completely done. I've never had enough resin for it. This is a, a piece that I had gotten from Timu and I'm sort of finding, and I, I know you can get a lot of really good, I shouldn't say good, so inexpensive stuff. I guess that's the, the basis of Timu. This, I can tell, was made with a 3D printer, and it doesn't look exactly like the picture they had shown. So I'm kind of getting the thought process of, I'm probably going to limit what I buy from Timu moving forward. Um, a 3D printer, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I do find some of the molds, like the thickness, and I don't know if you can tell, but it's thicker on this side than it is on this side, and I, I know nothing about 3D printers. Having said that, I, yeah, I'm starting to think sometimes when we buy less expensive things, we don't always get the best, and I've ordered some stamps for my card making lately, and some of them are just they're just no, I shouldn't say they're no good, but they really aren't the quality. And I'm sort of thinking if you want good quality, you're going to pay for it, which is fair. Um, I'm, so I'm starting to think just pay for the better quality so that you're not getting frustrated making what you're making. Anyway, this is one of the molds I got recently from them. And it's a very, I thought it would be deeper, the mold itself, like the, the actual picture, and it's not. And the face that's coming out on this isn't matching what was on the Timu website, at least to me. And that's what's got me thinking, yeah, you might want to stop. So I don't know how well you're going to see this. But this is what it looks like. The color is probably not all that brilliant having, you know, done what I did. But maybe you can, you can see that well enough. I expected this to be out, like, out more than what it is. And this face looks more like a man's face than a woman's face. And the picture looks very much like a woman. And I was trying to check some of the detail. And yes, they're matching, but it still doesn't look... It wasn't as I expected. Okay. So let's just put that off to the side. And I'll probably use some of my PBO uh, to highlight some of the features on this. Because I really do like the PBO. All right. Now, I still have to sand down the other piece I had done with the polyurethane. And I figured I'd, you know, do the demolding of this. And then if I had to sand this down, then I could do both at once and then bring them both back. So here we go. You, I can see, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but there are specs in this. So obviously, I didn't do as good of a job as I would have liked to of the fiberglass and again I don't know if I had enough in it I did do a little bit of research but it almost seems to me from what I did find and nothing talked about putting any of these fibers in resin that there is a fiberglass resin out there and so the you know the videos that I was finding on that that's what they were about so I, I stopped my search and went no so this may continue to be a, a play for me to try and figure this out as far as how much I might need, whether it's going to work, whether there's other things I can use this for as opposed to trying to do a phone stand. I don't know. And I think to give this a fair test, I'm going to let this sit for another day because knowing resin, knowing it does bend, at least giving it, um, you know, an, an extra day before we stick my phone on and see what happens. The big thing was I wanted to get this out so I could see if this is going to fit. I don't think it is. So it's kind of interesting. I can make the mix to mold to fit through this, but I can't make resin fit. That's just hilarious on my, as far as I'm concerned. So it does look like I'm going to have to um, shave these down. Yeah, that's not going to fit in there. Yeah, maybe it will on this side. Maybe. Oh, there we go. 
Okay, well that worked. Maybe it's just the way I was doing it. So as you can see, okay, I'm just going to turn this to the side so you can see this. It's it's not set. It's moving. Like it's definitely not staying straight. So at this point, this definitely needs more time just to sit flat. So we're going to let it sit for another day and then we're going to see what happens. If when we come back and we do this the second time and if it's still bending, then I'm going to look at it that this was a bit of a fail and look at it that maybe it's because there's not enough of the fiberglass in it or maybe maybe it's just not meant to and hopefully the person who had suggested this you know might be able to comment on how much product they put in theirs and maybe I just didn't put enough in it like maybe maybe I should have put a lot more in it I don't know but it was a test but I am in some ways I'm a little bit more interested in the polyurethane and how it's going to hold up because you know people a couple of people had commented on it so anyways we'll come back in a day it won't be again a day for you but it will be for me and we'll just see if this has gotten any better or if it's still just gonna just gonna bend in which case you know I'll leave it for a little while and maybe show it in another video to see if it's made any difference um, the resin may just need more time to cure which is totally you know cool in and of itself so again I'll be back we are back with phone stands I have the one that has the milled fiberglass in it I have the one we had made using the mixed mold and I have the one using the polyurethane you may wonder why this one is together if you recall this piece wouldn't fit into the this tall piece so I had to take it outside and I had to sand it down and I then had to take <laughs> a uh, hammer one of those uh, rubberized hammers to to push this through and get it through so I thought <clears throat> I'm not taking it out I'm not taking it out anyway so that's why that one's together and not the other two the other thing before we get into our phone stands and the results from that are these two pieces I had mentioned about this piece and how it didn't look as I had expected when I got the mold the only reason I have this piece is I had made this previously so I know the other piece didn't really show detail and I thought what I would do is show you how this piece looks having the two separate colors on it just in case you were interested so that is that and I made this with polyurethane so I want to talk about the polyurethane because I had no idea that it was such a strong resin I seriously I didn't know that and I'm very grateful to the person uh, there were I think there were two people who had commented about polyurethane and how strong it is again I had no idea that this stuff is so strong and I say that because I have had this piece together since yesterday and I know it's not great so I'll hold it off to the side here there's a bit of a wow in this piece but only because the molds not the best mold in the world and if you can recall when this piece was being set I was holding down the one corner so there's a bit of a wow in this but any wow is not because this stuff is bending this has been together for over 12 hours and it hasn't bent it hasn't bent <laughs> I know I sound surprised don't I but it has not bent which is brilliant for doing something like this now we're going to put my phone on we're not going to have it on for very long uh, but I know with resin pieces when I've done them like the regular resin they start to bend like straight away and this doesn't so that's awesome that's awesome I, I don't I don't know what else to say I know I had commented that I wanted to decorate this one up and I didn't get around to that but I just like 
I'm shocked. I, I have, I am. I had no idea that polyurethane was such a strong, a strong resin like that. Um, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. So I'm just going to try and, I mean, this isn't very thick, but I mean, there's a little bit of give to that. I had no idea. And it's not bending, is it? It's not moving. And when I've made the two part epoxy resin pieces foam stand, it would be bending by now. Okay, let's take this off of here. I'm just, I'm in awe over that. I really am. So I'll put that off to the side. So we'll take this guy. Now, it's had one full day to cure. And I didn't have to uh, sand it down. I was able to push this together like this. I had this piece up last night. So let's see what it does. And I, I can't, I maybe not, don't have it close enough to the edge to see if it's bending. Because of the angle, I can't see so much if it is or not. So I'm kind of going to rely on you guys to see if it's bending. It did, it, it was interesting because it was doing that yesterday, like it was bending yesterday, but I knew it was because it had just come out of its mold. And I wondered, you know, having another day, if that would work. I don't know. And maybe the fiberglass, maybe it is going to be okay. I was a little concerned with it bending yesterday that I'm thinking this isn't going to work. And I didn't put enough for the milled fiberglass in it because I didn't know how much to put in. But it's not, it's not really bending too much, is it? So again, that's kind of cool. We saw that when we were making it, that the color, coloring was off because of the color of the milled fiber. So fiberglass. So if you were using it, you'd want to be aware of the coloring is going to be darker. But I'm kind of impressed with that too. I just want to, I'm going to turn it towards this way. So maybe after, you know, a 70, I think there is a bit of a bow to it. But I don't think it's it's bending as fast as I kind of expected it to. But I think I think it is kind of bowing a little bit. So let me get that off of there. My phone's it's an iPhone. These things are known to be kind of heavy. Um, so I'm going to take this one apart. Yeah, there's still some play in that. Right? Can you see that? There's still some play in it. Anyway, I'm going to let this set up. At least it's not bending as much as it, I thought it was going to. I still, I'm very impressed with the polyurethane. Hands down. I may make another one of these um, in the future with a lot more of the fiber in it just to see what it does. And then this one, I wanted to, I decorated this up a little bit to give it a little bit of I don't know. Oomph. I didn't do the back. I only did the front, if you want to call it that. And I used one of my stencils. And this is Lunar Paste by Simon Hurley. Uh, it's called Break Up Blue. And all I did for this was I put my stencil on. I took some of the paste. I put it down on my mat. And then I just took my finger and rubbed it through. I was very careful doing that. I had a couple of boo-boos on this side, <clears throat> on this piece. However, on here, um, I did I did a pretty good job. And I'll, like I said, I was sitting down here, I picked it up on my finger, and then I wiped it through. And that's all I did. I just wanted to show you what I had done. Okay. It needed a little something-something. There. There we go. And there's that one. Now, obviously, because this is a ceramic resin, I don't expect this to bend. <clears throat> OK, 
because what it is, right? <laughs> I mean, <there's> a, <laughs> I, if this were to bend, then I'd really be concerned. But I have no expectation this is going to bend at all. And I, I think of the two of them, uh, the ceramic resin and the polyurethane, I tend to think there's more that we can do. Should I? I'll leave it on there a little bit longer. Um, let me just put my phone back up in there, just to you know be fair. I, I don't see that moving at all. You'll you'll let me know. We'll move this over a little bit more. This shouldn't move at all. So I think from a bit of a decorating perspective, I personally can do more with the ceramic resin than the polyurethane. However, that's not to say you can't you know, decorate it after the fact um, with whatever you want to do. And if you're working with polyurethane all the time, you've probably come up with some methods on how to get things the way you want them to be. We, this was on the fly. We were just doing this to do this to see if we could, you know, because I wanted to know about the polyurethane. And I did want to know about the milled fiberglass as well. But in general, I, I think it was a cool experiment. And I do like how I decorate this. <laughs> if I do say so myself. All right. And I would say maybe the polyurethane's just a smidge thicker than what that one is. But again, it doesn't matter. But having said that, I think we have some options for the phone stands now. I'm curious to know if you've, you know, got another way. Uh, that you can make these phone stands work, a different product, a different method. Uh, I had given a little bit more thought to the uh, pieces being put in something like this into the two-part epoxy, but again, I that would have to be a test I do in the future. Anyway, thank you for watching, and it's so, 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 so big of a thank to those guys out there who are commenting and giving suggestions because I think it's absolutely brilliant that we know what will work, what won't work. I, I appreciate it to no end. So thank you very much for that. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Comment, like, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, as everyone says, it doesn't cost anything. That's probably the only time I'm going to say that to you because <laughs> it doesn't. But <laughs> anyway, Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. And again, if you have any suggestions, uh, please, yeah, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Take care and bye for now.